In today's video, we're going to be having a conversation about the downsides to investing in Pokemon product. Now, before we jump into it, as always, we do weekly giveaways. All you have to do to enter is leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. But jumping into it, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest things that we talk about on this channel is just the absolute positives when it comes to investing in Pokemon, whether it be single, sealed product, and so much more. But I feel like we don't really talk about the negatives enough, or a lot of people don't really talk about the negatives enough in the market on other investment channels. So today we're going to be going over a couple of things that people need to take into consideration before deciding to invest in Pokemon, or if you're already doing that so far, some of the things that you might want to learn as as you begin to grow your collection. First thing I think it's extremely important for people to understand when it comes to Pokemon product and investing in Pokemon product. This is seen, although it's an investment, it is a specific type. I like to look at it as more or less a commodity or a physical commodity. When you are buying Pokemon product, Pokemon seal product, obviously you can dual it as a collectible slash investment long term. But most importantly, if you are seeing this from an investment perspective, you're going to have to be able to move this investment at some point by selling it to be able to make a return on value. Um, unlike a stock, right? You don't have to store it in your closet. You don't have to store it in your garage. You don't have to store it in your basement. It's an item that you can go on to an exchange, sell it within minutes, and then you're good to go, right? Versus when it comes to Pokemon product, you've got multiple things you need to take in consideration, right? Uh, is it a booster box item? Is it an elite trainer box item? Uh, is this booster box or elite trainer box a high demand one? Is it a low demand one? So many factors and variables are taken into consideration. If we take a look at some of the older booster boxes, for example, Lost Thunder, Fates Collide, XY era and Sun and Moon era product, we've seen an absolute drastic increase when it comes to the value of a lot of them. Although when we take a look at Team Up and Sun and Moon Cosmic Eclipse, you do see a high amount of volume with those specific ones because we're currently in a pocket of demand for the alternate arts within the team up generation. But as you continue to go farther back and you look at the prices on recent sales on TCG players website for booster boxes, you start to realize that it's a very low volume of sales. Some items are selling, you know, a couple times a month to literally once every couple of months. So it's always important to take that into consideration when you're looking at the product that you're investing in, you might be saying to yourself, all right, Eli, which would I much rather have right now? An Evolving Skies booster box at $400, or would I much rather have a Sun and Moon or an XY Era booster box for around the same price point? Now, it's kind of hard to compare the two because one's out of rotation and one is in rotation, but still, when you want to look at which one's a good form of investment, one of the most important things I feel like people need to take into consideration is what's the liquidity of this asset? If I'm trying to move it because I'm in a pinch, then I know that I'm gonna be looking at the item that's going to have a high amount of sales volume. Obviously, it's going to change over time of sales volume if the item does start to drastically increase in price because it starts to go out of a lot of people's price range. But at the end of the day, you still look at it from a scalability perspective when it comes to whether or not you're trying to move this overall item. Second thing a lot of people need to take into consideration as well is how am I going to go about selling this item that potentially has high volume of sales recently on TCG player or low volume of sales on TCG player. Obviously I'm referencing TCG player a lot because it's one of the most common places to sell your Pokemon sealed product. Same as if you're going to go with eBay, but ultimately at the end of the day for a lot of people, they might say to themselves, well, I don't want to sell on TCG player or eBay because there are fees that are involved and we'll get into that in a second, but there's other opportunities for you to sell your product, whether it be on Facebook marketplace groups, whether it be on using your own website, whether it be through consignment on Instagram pages, local stores, or just selling local within your Facebook community. There's so many different avenues in which you're able to sell the product. So being able to find that can be extremely, extremely helpful for yourself because if you're able to build a consistent clientele base as you continuously invest product time and time again, or let's say it's one of these things where you're not trying to build that clientele base. You're looking at this as a long-term 10 to 20 years down the line. And so you've hit that goal of yours of waiting for 10, 20 years on your sealed product. Now it's time to sell. All of a sudden, what's the avenue you're going to take? And you need to take these factors into consideration 
Next, when it comes to the third thing to consider, which is shipping and fees. Now, typically, if you're going to be selling on TCG or eBay, you're usually gonna be giving up roughly around 15% is your general margin for fees on both sites. However, if you are going to sell it on those websites, you're typically going to get a premium than if you were to sell it on a secondary market, such as a Facebook marketplace, a Facebook group. Taking these things into consideration, the next question you're asking yourself too is, what is the general shipping cost of this item? Well, there's a reason why people tend to sell things and collect things in cases. It's drastically more cheaper to ship. If you're talking about an item such as a booster box, it's typically gonna cost you anywhere between eight to $14 to ship, depending upon how close they live to you. Now, if you're saying I'm going to be shipping a full case of booster boxes, then it's typically gonna cost you anywhere between 12 to 18. You do the math right there, you're saving yourself off the top 30 to $40. Now, in the grand scheme of things, if you are someone that's looking at this from a long-term perspective, you know, $30, $40 isn't going to kill you, but if you are someone that is potentially going to offload certain products with high margins, but it's going to be a low value, such as Elite Trainer Boxes, for example, then it's going to absolutely crush you, especially if you're not going to be looking at it from a long-term perspective and you're just trying to flip product within a six month period, a one year period, you bought an elite trainer box case for 250 bucks and then you try to flip it for 400 bucks. Well, shipping is gonna run you $40 potentially to ship the case depending upon where they live. And sometimes if you're lucky, cheap sub $20, that's gonna be about five to 10% margins right there just for shipping a case, not even shipping individual units. The next most important thing to consider is what does your storage space look like? Um, when it comes to investing in Pokemon, it's one of these factors that a lot of people don't really think about or take into consideration because if you're gonna be keeping a lot of this product in a storage unit, if you're gonna be keeping it in your home, there is still an overhead value to you storing this general product. Whereas if you're going to be investing in something like a stock or a crypto, you're not necessarily going to be having to put it in sort of a storage overhead bin that potentially is going to come with rent and that's going to eat into your overall margins. Let's say that you don't have room because you're living in an apartment, right? If you're going to have to go out and get a storage unit and you're gonna be spending 40, $50 plus a month to be able to store your Pokemon collection or your investment as it continues to grow, you have to now take into consideration that general cost of overhead to be able to store this product. Now, for someone that is not in that situation where they're not living in an apartment, but they have a home, they have a garage where they're able to store things, that still doesn't change the fact of the matter that Looking at my home, for example, my garage has turned into an absolute warehouse and I try to make as much room as I can, but I can tell you one thing's for certain, when you're sitting on 30 plus cases of booster boxes, which you guys are probably wondering, Eli, what booster boxes are you buying so much of that you have 30 cases just sitting into your garage? I know a lot of people don't have that many, but for myself, Right now, it's Lost Origin and Silver Tempest booster boxes. I'm a huge fan of them. Right now, I'm picking them up on distro site for $102 a piece for each one of them. And if you wanna be able to take advantage and pick up at those prices as well, I highly recommend you join the wholesale program. Link is down in the description below. If you wanna be able to take advantage of getting Pokemon, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood, and so much more at wholesale prices, like mentioned before, Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, amazing sets. I'm going super heavy into it for a really nice price. Highly recommend you join the program to take advantage right now. Now, I know that not everyone is gonna be holding the same amount when it comes to investing in Pokemon products, but it's, of course, the example that I can best give for myself in my own situation. It's something where I had to start to manage my general storage the most effectively as possible. How am I going to be able to compactly put it in specific parts of the garage or specific parts of the house when storing it? Am I gonna put it in containers? Especially if you live in an area where the climate could potentially affect the overall product. If you live in a very humid place like Florida, you have to take into consideration what this could possibly do to your overall collection 
if there ends up being some sort of moisture that gets into the product. That's another reason why keeping sealed is king in a sealed case or in at least some sort of container because if you're just keeping the overall booster boxes loose and open, you could potentially see some damage which could be absolutely devastating to your investment. Now the last and arguably most important thing you need to take into consideration when it comes to investing in Pokemon and more or less I would say some of the downsides when it comes to it is are you someone that's fit to invest in Pokemon product? Do you have the discipline to do it? When investing in general, it can be extremely emotional for a lot of people, seeing the price and the volatility of items go up and down, the FOMO and the nature of people wanting to hop in before it's too late, or watching the price go down on their investment and wanting to sell immediately. It can be extremely stressful and having a set it and forget it mentality can be really healthy, but it's extremely difficult for a lot of people to be able to have the discipline enough to go through with that. Also with being a hobbyist myself, there's definitely some temptations when a product, whether it's performing good or not, to want to open it. And if you're someone that doesn't have the discipline to look at your overall investment and say to yourself, man, I know I'm investing in this product, but I want to be able to open this because it is such a fun time to be able to open Pokemon product and get that adrenaline rush then obviously it might not be something that's good as a long-term investment opportunity for yourself. Being able to go away with the emotions when making these decisions and being disciplined is something that a lot of people don't really have the ability to do. If you look at products such as what's going on right now with Scarlet and Violet booster boxes, you look at what's going on with products such as Lost Orge and Silver Tempest where the prices are absolutely crashing. Some people might have invested in these items and said to themselves, wow, these are bricks. I wanna get out now before it's too late, begin to flash sale. Or they might look at these items and say, wow, these items are extremely, extremely cheap. Why would I ever consider investing in them because no one wants them? Well, the mentality that I hear a lot of times is people will always wish when a product gets extremely expensive that they could have had the opportunity to get in cheaper but then the minute it gets cheaper, all of a sudden people are saying it's a brick, I don't want to invest in it. I think a good example of this is the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. This is an item that people saw it at $300 and said, man, if this item went down to just half the price, I would love to pick it up, just 200 bucks. All of a sudden it gets printed into the ground, goes sub 100 bucks, and all of a sudden it's a huge brick because of the amount of print. But as we know with sealed product in Pokemon, it's deflationary. The more that gets open, the less supply there is. And once this item goes out of rotation, or presumably is because we haven't heard any news of another print for it, it's going to continuously go up in value regardless of the demand decline, just based on the fact that it is a sealed product that is naturally going to be scarcer time and time again. Now that we've learned a lot of the over Overall downsides when it comes to investing in Pokemon. I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Is this something that's for you? Is it not? Are you an investor? Are these things that you deal with? I want to hear some conversations being started about this. Please let me know your guys' overall thoughts. But as far as it goes for today's video, that is all. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you all on Tuesday.